is the La Paz Report with Lilia DePaz. Picture this, right? Born in Jamaica, countryside, goats, cows, every neighbor friendly. I'm able to roam the streets free, no matter what time of day or what time of night. Everyone in the community had a hand in raising me, so I was always free to roam and do as I please. Living in a two bedroom house, nine people, five adults, four children, right at the time. Um, hear the story about going away to America, you know what I mean? And then at them times we had, you know, we had a TV, nobody really watched it, you don't really turn on the TV, that was forbidden. But every now and again a show come on, and, you know, you watch some TV, and you see these images of what America looked like. So when my grandmother came back from visiting America, and said, okay, well, she's moving the entire family up as a child. That was the biggest thing, the biggest moment of my life, me done picture what the house looked like, you know, the the gear, this everything I this is everything already, right? And remember flying in the night, all the lights, you never see lights like this before, all the lights, and for me this was heaven. Reach round to my grandmother's house the night, it was dark. It didn't really look like the house was picture, evening? but uh, thank you first of all for having me, and I'm doing wonderful this evening. I'm in the presence of a beautiful queen. I love it. I love it, and thank you so much. Thank now, you. Kamani, you have to. Now, first of all, that name—it's an East African name. Uh, it means adventurous traveler. Yes. And you have a CD. Uh, it's called The Journey. Yes. Speak to me a little bit more about. Um. Well, first, Kamani, adventurous traveler, and you know, what I mean, I, I think for some reason the name. You know, I said that everything is connected through vibration, and I think that given the name Kamani and what it mean, what it means. You know what I mean, I'm, I'm, I feel as though I'm living up to the name, <laughs> so to speak. Um, East African name, and, and, and it means an adventurous traveler, but in West Africa, it also have a meaning there, which is the meaning, how it was translated to me. I was in Africa at the time when, when a gentleman came up and translated. And what he said to me was, Kimani is the person that is always getting a fight, is always getting beat down, but always rise to his feet. So that was his explanation. Well, I, I think uh, you're living up to your name because you're definitely rising up, rising up. And, uh, you know, speaking of, you know, you're, you're the son of the legendary Bob Marley, who, who some even uh, will call somewhat of a prophet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, what is, you know, the legacy that you yourself are wanting to leave behind? Is it a combined legacy with your father's? or? Yeah. Yes, definitely. The legacy, you see, I'm here to continue on a great legacy. You know what I mean? And, 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 and somewhere in that, then I will carve out a piece of my own. But really, the big picture is, is continuing this legacy. And this legacy is about truth and righteousness. You know what I mean? So once that is the legacy, then it, 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 it all falls in line with, you know what I mean, the, 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 the work my father left behind and the work that is still left to be done. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Okay, I, I got to ask you, a lot of people may not un know that you are a die-hard jock. You were a football star and a soccer star. Now, how did you get from become being an athlete to a musician? You know, I think this was, this was my destiny, and I think it was something that I couldn't escape. For the simple being that, you know, I remember my early years in life, music was the furthest thing from my mind. You know what I mean? Um, my mother is an athlete, you know, I was a star athlete growing up through Pop Warner, through high school. Didn't go to college, I stopped in high school and, and, and music, you know, um, took role right after that. Um, you know what I mean, so I've always been that and, and, and how my musical career started, it was almost like, for me, you know, people always ask me, alright, one question is, when did you start your music career? And I can't really remember that time for the simple fact that my music career kind of started as a fluke. You know, I was at a friend's house um, playing around on a, on a music play out on the weekends at club. So, you know, I'm up on them turntable. And I was on the mic playing around, and it so happened that an ex producer of my father, Carl Peterson, walked in at the time. And he said to me, um, You have a nice tone. He didn't say, You know how to sing. He said, You have a nice tone. <laughs> and uh, so he said, You know, maybe you should come over on the weekends and, and, and you know see if we could work something now and I started going there like on the Saturdays maybe for like two hours every Saturday and that's right about the time when I wrote Dear Dad 
Now he had played their dad for Clifton specialist Dylan at the time, who was in charge of Shaba, Patra, and Mad Cobra career. And he heard the song and wanted to give me a recording deal. Now, I took the recording deal, and even at that moment, it still didn't dawn in me that, okay, well, this is what you're gonna be doing for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? So for me, the record company was like, all right, let me jump on this ride and see where it's gonna take me. You know what I mean? Let's see what's gonna happen. And the changing point for me, I could say when I knew that this was something that I would have to take serious and this was what I was meant to do with, with, with my life was to relate the message and, and continue my father's legacy. I was at a show once and after the show, a gentleman walked up to me and said to me, I saved his life. Now, of course, I was curious, how did I do that? And he said to me, he lost his father about two months before and his father was the only person that he had in his life. So after losing his father, he contemplated on taking his own life. Mm. So he said he was at home when the pressure finally got to him. He was at home, he had the revolver out and you know, he was telling himself he's gonna do it. And he said for some reason, something told him to press play on his CD player, tape player, whatever it was. And he pressed play and the song Their Dad came on. And at this point, I have a grown man in front of me that's bawling like a baby and telling me a story to the point where it started to bring me to tears. And it, it's at this moment that I know that, okay, um, your music, it, it touched people. You know what I mean? I did it trying to release some, some bottles of feeling for myself and realized that it ended up touching not only people who lost fathers, just people who lost a loved one. You know what I mean? So it was really at that moment that for me it was like, okay, well, you have a mission to accomplish. So you have to stay focused and positive on this mission and make sure that the message that, that I relay in the music is is message that I want to be out there. You know what I mean? I do, I do. It has to have some substance is it what you're speaking with. Substance. It definitely have to have substance. That's all right. And speaking of this Dear Dad now, the, the, the book, Dear Dad, and we, we're not going to talk about the controversy of, of what went on. We're just thanking God that it's, the, you know, you're on the tour. Now tell us more about this Dear Dad tour and, and pr promoting the uh, book. You're going to several cities. Yeah, I'm um, on a 27 city store. 27 city tour <laughs> mm -hmm. for Dear Dad, and it, it's it's been so far it's been amazing. You know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm excited. It's 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 been wonderful. The feeling just of how many people turn out to 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 endorse this book, to support me. You know what I mean? And what I'm doing with this book and also in the music. So the feeling has been overwhelming. You know what I mean? And and this, you know, like the gathering tonight, let me know that once again I'm here for a purpose. Um, people see that and believe in me and that motivates me to keep on going because you know at times I go through the feeling of giving up you know what I mean maybe you, you start to worry about the minute things in life that really don't matter you know at one point I remember my biggest thing was like how much radio spins when that is not the issue the true issue is really continuing the message and know that whether you change one person life or a million people life then you have accomplished something in life you know what i mean so my thing is always to continue to to, to want to inspire you know what i mean and we know that i can't do that through the music that's that's what's up i i'm, I'm just totally digging your vibe and and the final question will there be a shot to too hopefully <laughs> all right lilia de the passport here with mr kamani marley stay positive always Rastafari.